and eyes and eyes on the skies have been officially endorsed by the International Astronomical Union and Eyes on the Skies is actually the flagship book of the International Astronomical Union for the Year of Astronomy. But much more than I can say, our guest of honor will be able to say, he is Lars Lindbergh Christensen, he is press officer of the International Astronomical Union, works at ESO in Gartling by Munich, and he is helping coordinating all these global events for the Year of Astronomy, and he co-authored the books. So I'd like you to give an applause to our guest of honor, Lars Christensen. Thank you, that's, that's too much. Very kind of you. I too am a physicist, but probably not like most of you. I am an envoy from outer space, an astronomer. I work at the European Southern Observatory, as Christoph so kindly mentioned, uh, probably known to many of you. What you may not know is that ESO, which is here in Germany, is in fact the most productive observatory in the world. If you look at the scientific peer-reviewed publications being produced with ESO data, it's quite an achievement. And we have these wonderful frontline telescopes in Chile. We have the La Silla uh, Observatory, which was the first one built. And uh, I have to mention that because tomorrow is actually the 40th anniversary of the La Silla Observatory. So for 40 years, La Silla has been breaking the frontiers of astronomy and is in fact at the moment the second most productive single entity in the world. The most productive, you might ask, is, you might know, the Very Large Telescope, which is also in Chile, also a European telescope and those two together brings Europe to the front line of research. For the future, we have the ALMA telescope, which is a sub-millimeter telescope being built at the moment. It's nothing short of the largest astronomical project at all. And a bit further out into the future, we have a 42-meter telescope being planned at the moment. It will be built roughly around 2018. And this will then, at the time, be the largest eye on the sky, as we call it. So we're here to talk a little bit about these two books, which are aimed at the lay audience in the, at the occasion of the International Year of Astronomy. The IYA, as we call it, between us, started quite some years ago. The idea came up in 2002, 2003. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union decided to go ahead with this. We, of course, as you all remember, had the International Year of Physics or World Year of Physics in 2005, a, a similar, very successful uh, thing. 2007, we started implementing the International Year of Astronomy, and uh, we are now at the peak of the actual events. Thousands and thousands of things are going on around the world, mostly out in the communities, in the local environments, in the regional environments, national environments. We have 11 global cornerstones, and the IYA project is quite unique. I think it's the first time in history that this big an undertaking has been tried. We have 137 nations participating in the event. And that's quite something if you look at a world map. It's actually covered, apart from some significant holes, mostly in Africa and in parts of Asia. And we are, of course, continuously trying to get these people involved in popularizing astronomy and making astronomy and, in turn, physics more known to the uh, environment, uh, the local governments, the people out in the villages. Hover um, Chilling is a very well-known Dutch science communicator. Um, he and I sat down in uh, 2007, late 2007, and decided we wanted to make a book for the International Year of Astronomy. Why is the International Year of Astronomy in 2009? This is because of the telescope. You might have guessed it, but it's actually not so easy to say exactly why 2009. It turns out that the history of the telescope is shrouded in mystery. You can read all about it in the book, but it turns out that the spectacle makers, the glass uh, manufacturers, they started already in the 14th century making glasses for people, and 
somehow along around 1600 the telescope emerged. No one really knows who invented it because several players actually claim ownership. Hans Lipperhey you might have heard of, Zacharias Janssen and others, they, um, they invented telescopes, they didn't quite document what they did, but we know that they had telescopes just before that crucial date in 1609, where Galileo Galilei took a telescope he himself had manufactured, presumably by looking at the Dutch telescopes, and pointed it to the sky. What he saw changed our view of the world forever, in two ways. He looked at the faces of Venus, he looked at sunspots, he looked at craters of the moon, and he realized that these were other worlds, like our own Earth, an Earth-shattering insight. Secondly, he documented systematically his observations, which was a rather new thing, and in that way really founded the way for the research that we all know and love today. In the book you can read about this, but much more than just the history, you can read about the technology, how telescopes grew through time, how the detectors made a huge and profound change of the way that astronomers work by using electronic devices, and of course there's a whole chapter looking at the future where we have these magnificent huge optical telescopes coming, space telescopes, and so on. Hidden Universe is a somewhat different book. It's not a textbook. It could have been a textbook. It would have been a lot easier to write. A lot easier to write. What we are attempting, I'm not saying we're succeeding. We think we're succeeding, but I'd let you be the judges of that. We are succeeding to explain the physics behind all the light that's coming. So not just the light we see with our eyes, but also the infrared, the ultraviolet, the x-rays, particles as well. So we're talking about things like synchrotron radiation. We're talking about very, very hot million degree gas in distant clusters of galaxies, all at a level where we hope that lay people can follow and uh, get excited as we are and learn something about the universe. So I encourage you to take a look and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lars, for this excellent introduction. Thank you all for coming. Please stay on.